happened, guys? Uh, I'm excited for this video, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I was going to basically just do a review on this knife. This is one of my favorite slip joints for 2014. This is Case's new um, trapper pattern, but in carbon fiber. All right, so we have carbon fiber scales on a traditional style trapper, okay? And you can see it's bolsterless. There's no bolsters on either end, which traditionally, in the background, you can see I have a bunch of trappers there. It would have bolsters on there. And what's exciting about this knife is that it's a little bit of new with a lot of old. It is extremely rich in history, but it's a modern take on this knife. The advantage of having this is that it's a little bit lighter, but not much. It's about an ounce. We'll do official weight here in a little bit. But um, it's just nice to see the incorporation of modern materials and slight design changes into old traditional knives because what it does is it integrates two types of knife people which is amazing if you look in the knife industry you ba it's basically split and a lot of people don't get exposed to this on youtube because most of the knife videos on youtube are of modern day knives what we see a lot of is cool new tactical folders that's what in my opinion from what i've seen on youtube has been the majority of knife videos Brand new titanium frame lock knives with the latest steel, right? That's what we see day in and day out, and that's amazing. That's awesome. I love it. But what's forgotten are these old knives, okay? And these traditional knives, you know, that, that basically created the platform to work off of. You know, these are the original folding knives, all right? This particular pattern has been around since, you know, the early 1900s. And um, specifically, the standard um, trapper... I think officially it's around 1920. That's what all the knife experts say. By 1920, both Case and K-Bar came out with this standard style uh, trapper knife. That's when they were officially starting to put them into production and stuff. And back then, the knife industry was a little bit different. I mean, the people at K-Bar and the people at Case, they're all family friends. And, and the knife industry itself was a little bit more, um, it was a little smaller, a little bit more local and stuff. It wasn't, you know, a worldwide crazy thing that it is today. Which is awesome. The expansion in the knife industry is amazing because it opens up doors to, to new people and new designers, new knives, new companies. And that's all great and everything. But I like looking back and learning a little bit about the history and uh, enjoying, you know, the roots of, of everything, of where knives really came from. And that's where slip joints really come in. This is why I have a passion. You know, guys know that I love all knives. That's why I used the tag cutlery lever when I was nine years old on a forum and has stuck with it ever since because pretty much everything with a sharp edge I'm interested in. And it's not just the modern day titanium, you know, frame lock folder that I'm interested in. I'm also interested in, in the history of knives. It's kind of like cars. You know, there's some cool cars that come out today, but how many people really look back and say, you know what, they don't make cars like they used to. Every car today kind of looks the same. I hear it all the time, right? It's no different with knives. There was, there was so much room for versatility and so much room to change back then, you know? And now, because everything's been done, everything looks the same. And there's not as much innovation as far as like different shapes and stuff like that. And of course, I'm being a little bit broad. Uh, even within tactical folders, there are plenty of differences and there's some cool new exciting designs. But as using you know, cars as a reference, look at the cars in the 70s as compared to the cars today. And with um, slip joints, there's so many different patterns, whereas today's modern folder generally look the same, you know, overall. But anyway, um, I don't want to make this, uh, you know, a two-hour video. I can talk about old knives for hours and hours and hours. But um, basically, what I'm trying to get down to is I was going to do a review on this, and instead of doing just a review, I figured I would incorporate a little bit of history and show off some different trappers and stuff and hopefully educate some teenagers who are getting into knives. Perhaps some, uh, some people have been in knives for a long time but never really looked at this particular um, you know, corner of the knife industry because there's lots of people out there that just do slip joints and then you know, the other half uh, are people who just do modern knives. And as far as YouTube's concerned, what do we see on YouTube? Uh, and it's not a complaint because I love, I love all the knife videos, but we see modern day tactical folders. That's what, in my opinion, is the majority of knife videos on YouTube. Then you see, you know, a bunch of cool fixed blade uh, videos, which is awesome. Love seeing some fixed blades, especially in use. It's a lot different than folders. You know, you don't necessarily want to watch a video of someone cutting open boxes all day long. But when someone's chopping a tree down and making fires and shelters and stuff, awesome. Completely uh, entertaining and educational upon that specific knife. But anyway, um, yeah, instead of just doing a review, I'm going to do a review and hopefully uh, teach you guys something. 
And I am always open <laughs> to learning. I don't know everything about this stuff. So, uh, you know, if you have something to add to this video, please, please do uh, leave a comment, not only for myself to read, but for other viewers to read and, and learn further about these knives and their history. But anyway, basically, the um, trapper pattern, the standard trapper, because there's tons of different types. There's the standard, there's uh, light trappers, slim trappers, heavy trappers, saddle horn trappers, which refers to the shape of the handle. Then there's double end trappers, which basically, I mean, you can see what makes this a trapper is the fact that it's first off a jackknife. Not to confuse you guys, but a jackknife, from my understanding by definition, is a folding slip joint where one or more blades is uh, mounted at the same pivot point. So because there's two blades in here and they're attached to the same pivot, that makes this a jackknife, but more specifically, a trapper. And what makes this a trapper, I mean, it's not just the handle shape, it's the fact that there's two blades, two specific blades, a, um, a spade blade, as well as a uh, clip point blade. And traditionally, the clip point blade from a right side presentation will be on top and the spade blade, excuse me, will be in the back. And it's important that they are the same size. If you change the size of one of these blades, it's not a traditional standard trapper anymore. So there's a lot of specific details as far as terminology and names and stuff like that. And of course, over the years, there's a lot of variants on this knife. Tons of variants, as I've said. So basically, this is a modern day take on a standard trapper. Now, the clip point blade would be your main blade. Okay, this is what you would use day in and day out, whatever you know purposes you need it for. Clip point having a, uh, you know, more acute point here, easy for penetration, a little bit of belly towards the tip there, nice straight edge though, so it's pretty versatile blade shape. The spade blade, uh, spade blade excuse me, I have a hard time saying that. Um, traditionally, this was a castration blade. This was used to basically, you know, uh, castrate your animals. If you know what a castration means, it means cutting the balls off so they can't have uh, offspring, can't have babies. Um, a lot of purposes for this. A lot of farmers would use this blade, but that's what this specifically was historically used for. However, the spade blade itself goes back, you know, mid to, to late 1800s. There were folding knives with spade blades in them, okay? Some had just a spade blade, some had two blades, but this exact specific configuration, as you see it right here, is considered a trapper, okay? The only difference between this one and all the ones in the back is the handle material. That is, that is the only difference, all right? All these are identical, okay? In size, shape, configuration, what blades there are, where they are, everything else is the same. The only difference is, of course, you know, the look of them. What kind of uh, handle inserts are there on here? And of course, in this case, because there's no bolsters, it's just the full scales. I'm gonna take a second to actually give you a reference here. I wanna reference a book. This is one of my favorite books. This happens to be the fourth edition but I do have uh, other versions of this book. This is Bernard Levine's Guide to Knives and Their Values. And Bernard Levine, if you don't know, is a very respected man in the knife industry and one of the um, most knowledgeable men in the knife industry. Not the only one, but uh, one of the more known ones uh, out there. And uh, this is his fourth edition of this book. It's a big, fat book with tons of great information. I've done uh, a book review, I believe, on this before. Um, so much information here on knives, not just their values, but just knife history in general. Different uh, types of uh, slip joints, their shapes, where they came from, what companies started making them. Great pictures, you know, in referencing what they used to look like. And of course, it is a guidebook, so if you happen to have a really old knife, you might be able to find it here and get a, a pretty good idea of what it's worth. Um, the brand new edition, I believe it's like 40 or 50 bucks, worth every penny, every penny. I have. I know I have the fourth, I also have the fifth edition. I'm not sure if I have the latest one. I have to check, but um, I love getting knife books. And I wanna just reference this really quick. There's two pages here, little excerpts I wanna read about uh, what he has to say regarding trappers. Okay, now as I mentioned before, a trapper is a jackknife first, so it is in the jackknife section. So Bernard Levine's book here, this is page 184 in the fourth edition. Okay, I have this bookmarked here. Okay, you see swell centered uh, regular jacks. But if I skip down a little bit, the second paragraph, I'm gonna read this for you. This is about trappers. The standard trapper is one of several varieties of trapper pattern. Uh, these are all covered in a separate chapter. All trapper patterns, regardless of shape or size, have two full length blades, a slender clip, and a long or great western spay. The standard trapper pattern made on the swell centered regular jack uh, handle die has been offered since the 1920s. 
However, since the mid 19th century, the handle die has been used for lockbacks and folding hunters. These attractive knives uh, usually have a single flat ground or saber ground clip uh, point blade. Uh, case and a few other firms still use swell center regular jack handles for single blade lockbacks. Case most recent version is called the Cheetah and has a built in folding guard. Uh, Alright, well, that's, that has nothing to do with this, but I will show you real quick since I happen to have one here. This is the Cheetah. Nothing to do with this whatsoever, but since I just read that, I love the Cheetah. I'll do another video on this in the future. I just actually show this to Christina. She's never seen this pattern before because like many of you guys out there watching, you're not exposed to old knife patterns and old knife styles. All you know is modern day knives. So basically this is a lockback knife, but what my favorite part of the Cheetah, of course, is the fact that you integrate a folding or pivoting guard. All right, so when closed, it's flat. And as you open it, that guard opens up, locks solid, keeps your hand from riding up and, and so forth. We will talk about this in the future, but I believe I already did a video on cheetahs. But anyway, moving on, I have another page here in this book marked that I want to read just a little bit for you guys. And again, this is just a reference. So, you know, first of all, I'm not making this crap up, but also to hopefully spark some interest in getting yourself some, some literature on knives. A lot to learn. All right, trappers, muskrats, and large trappers. A standard trapper or heavy trapper is around four to four and a quarter inches long closed. It is built on a swell centered regular jack handle die. Light trappers are built on three and three quarter inch or larger slim serpentine handle dies. The light trapper was most likely introduced before the first world war. The standard trapper not until the mid 1920s. The mini trappers are compact trapper style knives, both standard and lightweight, around three and a quarter to three and a half inches long, closed. They are introduced in the 1970s. Premium trappers are built on serpentine premium stock handles, both round end and square end. They range from three and five eighths up to four and three eighths inches long. Double end trappers are similar to premium trappers, only one blade uh, in each end. A variant of the double end trapper is the muskrat. It has two identical muskrat clip blades, one on each end. So you see, you know, over the years in knife history, there were alterations to these knives, and then the more you alter them, they can't really be called the same thing anymore, so therefore you've created new knives. I know uh, one particular guy in knife forms that is a muskrat fiend. He loves muskrats and collects them. Just very, very cool. Here's a, a good example. I mean, the muskrat has, this isn't a, uh, a muskrat, but it has two um, pivot points where the blades are. So instead of having the, both blades on one end, it's one blade on each end. This is, happens to be a uh, double end um, uh, trapper. All right, so there's a good uh, pictorial example of that. But a muskrat is basically this knife, only two clip point blades instead of having a clip point and a spade blade. So uh, there you go. I didn't even see that. <laughs> so there's a good example of a muskrat. Just really, really cool. Um, I love the history of knives and slip joints. Uh, that's why I just I have such a fascination with them because there's so much to learn and just really really awesome uh, I mentioned real quick that there is a mini version this is one of modern day mini trappers and this is much smaller but it is literally identical in every way except for the size it is scaled down so there you go very cool so um, moving on I want to show these old knives real quick. Uh, I'm not gonna go through each one. They're, like I said, they're literally identical. They're all trappers. These are all post 2000 trappers. The only difference is the handle material. And if you look, if you kind of follow trappers and the knife industry, what you'll find is that the trapper knife hasn't really changed much. But every season or every couple months or every year, different companies will basically offer uh, a different type of handle material or a different type of design. And they incorporate that in a slew of different patterns. For example, if you go to like Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which is eKnifeworks.com, and you type in, uh, I don't know, stag or something, right? You'll see stag handle slip joints, but every type of pattern that they offer, all right? So specifically like Case, if you go to Case, uh, go to the website or go to some you know, online dealer and you type in uh, G10, right? And this is the other thing I wanna mention is that this orange G10 uh, trapper Again, this is when they started to first incorporate new age materials into old designs. We have a standard trapper, only we have G10 inserts as opposed to a more traditional look, such as wood 
or uh, jigged bone, you know, colored bone. You have uh, some natural bone here. We have bone that is, uh, simulates stag. And then of course you have real stag. And then of course there's a lot of premium materials such as mother of pearl or abalone and just natural, beautiful materials that they'll use. Uh, sometimes some stone, just depends. But I love this knife because it incorporated, this is the first time I actually got excited uh, really, really excited about seeing um, some new age material on an old uh, style knife is when Case put their G10. They also have a black version, I believe, but they put G10 uh, as an insert as opposed to some of the traditional materials. So, so cool. Um, and then, of course, in seeing the carbon fiber, I was completely blown away. Just really awesome. It's so exciting. It's actually hard to even continue. I don't even know like what direction to go in to talk about. And you guys know I can talk and talk and talk. But uh, I don't want to. I don't want to make this video incredibly long. Um, you guys kind of get the point. It's exciting it, to me. It's awesome to see these old knives. You know, especially when they're altered to kind of you know fit a niche. You like modern day stuff. There's a, tons of people that just are obsessed with carbon fiber, right? It's really cool to see that they just offer a carbon fiber version of a slip joint. It's just really nice. It's the incorporation of old and new, and I can't get enough of it. It's just awesome. Um, this particular knife, as far as price, if you're looking to get one of these, these range anywhere from like 70 to 80. That's the general ballpark. Um, I would say high 70s for the most part, but I believe, I think Amazon, you know, they, it's as low as like 70 or, or you know, low 70s, but, um, you know, you can always support your local dealers. They might have them for 5 or $10 more, but money goes to a great place. Just saying. Um, but if you're interested in trappers in general, just some regular old trappers, the average price is about 50 bucks or so, but really depending on the type of handle material and if it's a limited edition or commemorative or whatever, you're talking 100 plus. It just depends on the model. But if you're looking for trappers in general, $50 is a pretty good average price. You know, like you'll see them 45, you know, or 52, just in and around that price range. Um, very, very cool knives to have, even if you don't want to get something like this. Uh, the modern kind of version of it. I highly recommend you know trying an old knife. The Trapper is probably one of the most popular designs. It's definitely one of the most made uh, patterns as far as slip joints go. Um, these are like I said post 2000. Everything you see here. So I want to bring you guys back to a couple decades. This is a case Trapper from the 90s. Very cool. This one happens to have some uh, artwork on the blades here. Okay, again, commemorative or collectible. Um, you see, American Eagle, commemorative. Limited edition, this is one of 500. And then you have a nice scene on here with some eagles and stuff, and the bolster is marked. This one happens to be number 260. But that is a throwback, that is a, a trapper from the 90s. Um, let's go back another decade. Here is a case trapper from the 80s. And this has genuine stag on here. And also some file work on that uh, clip point blade. It's very cool. I'm gonna do a video in the future about dating your case knives. All right, you can look at the the bolster here. Uh, post 2000, they use a system. It's very very uh, simple to to date these, especially the new ones. The old ones, however, a little bit harder. But these new ones, you see, there's a series of X's and dots. Okay, first of all, you go by the logo, what the logo looks like, but in addition to the uh, X's and dots, depending on how many are there, you can easily figure out, you know, when your knife was made. Kind of like dating a Zippo, right? Um, but I want to go back to my oldest. This is the oldest trapper that I have in my collection, and unfortunately, I haven't looked uh, in detail as to the exact date, but just by the, um, uh, the actual uh, logo of the case, uh, you know, tank stamp on here. It ranges from 1940 to 1964. And this is my favorite trapper just because of the fact that it is my oldest. All right, if I had to guess, probably in the 50s sometime, that's the, the range there. You see there's a lot of discoloration on the bolster here, but it's in pretty damn good shape for its age. Smooth bone for the handle material. Nice long nail nick on here and a swedge on that main blade. So. A little bit of a different design than what we see on most of the uh, trappers. Give you a side by side here so you can see that. Very cool. Also very high polished as opposed to the more satin on this newer one. But uh, 
Yeah, you can see the old logo on there. Just awesome. But again, being a trapper, it's true to uh, its design. All right. Best case, or you know, the oldest case scenario would be 1940 when this came out, right? And the uh, the newest it could be is from 1964. So let's compare those real quick. Just want to show you the difference between, let's say, a 1960s knife and a 2014 knife. They look pretty damn close, right? I love it. I love it. It's uh, it's just a new take on a great old knife. All right, guys, real quick, I'm gonna break out the scale just to show you the difference between a standard, let's just pick the G10 one, standard uh, trapper, let me move some of these out of the way, and this carbon fiber one, because the biggest advantage is the fact that uh, it's gonna be a little bit lighter for you. So we'll grab a couple random ones here. First one, the G10, okay, this is in ounces, 3.8 ounces, all right. We'll grab this one, 3.9, 3.5, So see the range here, right? We pop on this um, carbon fiber one, 2.6. So, in conclusion, uh, as you can see, I, I love trappers. I always have, I always will. Uh, I just, I love lots of slip joints, but trapper pattern is on probably my top 10 favorite uh, knife patterns, just because of how rich in history it is and how, how often it was used. Um, I love trappers, I love Texas toothpicks, I love six plus bladed Stockmans. <laughs> um, peanuts, sow bellies, muskrats, I mean, you name them, there, there's a million out there, a million slip joints. Um, educate yourself, get yourself some books. You know, there's a great one to start. Get the latest version of it and just uh, read it. Read it like a book from first page to the end and you'll be uh, amazed as what you're gonna learn. But uh, anyway, as far as this specific knife, um, it's about an ounce or more lighter than pretty much any version of a trapper, okay? So getting back to the review aspect of this particular knife, you know, is the extra 40 bucks really worth, um, you know, the, the ounce in weight? Uh, that's up to you. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you like trappers, get a trapper. Uh, if you if you like carbon fiber, this is pretty much the only thing on the market that I've seen. So it's obviously a sure winner. It's a cool collectible. And of course, if you guys have a nice collection of trappers, it's a must have for the collection to see, you know, modern day take on it. Um, but it's gonna cut just the same as anything on the table. Okay, anything from case from the $30, you know, yellow Durlin version of it, the very base of the trappers all the way up to the 100 plus you know, commemorative um, with mother of pearl uh, inlays, they're all they all cut the same. So as far as performance, they all work and they work well. No, it's not the the next six hundred dollar custom titanium frame lock folder that you have clipped to your three hundred dollar bag and your Molly gear. Uh, no, it's just a knife you slip in your pocket. It's gonna get scratched to hell by your pocket change and your keys and everything else. But every time you take it out, it's gonna work. And that's what you guys really want to know. At the end of the day, is it gonna work? Yes, it works well. Um, this particular one has cases stainless, and uh, it holds a decent edge. No, it's not the best. Um, this one came nice and sharp out of the box, and it, it's still pretty damn sharp. I mean, it works well every time that I've taken it out to use it. Uh, as far as using uh, multiple blade slip joints, I tend to just change the blade up just to change the blade up. Um, do I have a particular reason to use a clip point over the spay? I mean, if I need to pierce into a box, I, of course, perhaps would pick this one first and you know generally speaking I do however the one you know I'm not castrating animals out there but the one good use I found for a spay blade is starting to uh, chisel into wood to uh, you know carve that that indentation uh, to your hearth if you're doing fire making uh, fantastic blade style for that okay if you want to whittle a little hole into something uh, the spay blade is where it's at it works very well for that purpose but other than that, like I said, I'm not, I'm not de-bowling any kind of animals out there. So uh, for me, it's just another flat edge. That's all. It's just another sharp blade in my knife. In case this one goes dull, it's kind of a backup. So anyway, that's it. That is my review slash history lesson of, uh, you know, the trapper in general, but more specific, these case trappers. What a wonderful thing to collect. Um, just awesome. 
And believe it or not, I mean, each one of these knives, even though some of these knives are like, you know, 80 or 90 bucks, uh, compare it to modern day folders. You know, what, what the, the latest and greatest everyone buys is 100, 200, 300, what, four, five, 600. Um, <laughs> as far as knives, uh, knives go, there's many different levels of uh, collectors out there. But getting into slip joints is not a bad shake. That being said, if you guys really get into um, slip joints, there are dozens and dozens of really good custom knife makers that make slip joints. And I've never in my life had a custom slip joint yet, but it is certainly in my future. I've always wanted one. So stay tuned for that. I don't know when that'll happen, but uh, uh, sometime in my future. I just have such an appreciation for slip joints. It's uh, I don't want to say it's a dying art because it's not. There's still hundreds and hundreds of guys out there and women too that love these knives and collect them. I mean, you know, if you really want to see that in person, go to, uh, you know, a meeting at the, the Case Factory. Go to Bradford, Pennsylvania. Every year they have a, a like a trade show there. Um, you know, the Zippo stuff is one thing, but then of course the uh, Case Cutlery uh, is a whole different thing. You see collectors from all around the world show up there to do uh, trades and sales and, and just hang out with each other and talk. But um, yeah. If you guys have interest in this stuff, please, you know, be heard. Make a, make a comment, post a comment, you know, let me know in messages. If you want to see more stuff like this, I have some other other uh, patterns that I can certainly talk about as far as slip joints are concerned. But, uh, yeah, it's all fascinating to me. It's knife history, and uh, I love it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much or, or get too off the beaten path. But the, the point here was that I love this style of knife, and uh, it's just really cool the case came up with a modern version of it to, to kind of... You know spark the interest again there's a lot of kids out there that just don't don't get exposed to these types of knives and this is what your, your father your grandfather your great-grandfather you know this is the, the stuff they had they didn't have any uh, cool spider codes back then you know not before the 80s uh, you're talking 1950s you know, circa 1910 you know no benchmates no SOGs no awesome CRKTs back then so uh, most of what you guys see today is uh, new kids on the block and uh, it's cool to, to break out the, uh, the old school stuff every now and then. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I thank you very much for watching and hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care.